live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News Today starts right now. Well, it may be cool out there to take a look over the river here. Belle Isle and Windsor in the distance, a gorgeous sunrise for us, and we do have some warmer weather for the rest of our weekend. Andrew is tracking those temps. Wow. What a gorgeous live shot absolutely. there. Absolutely. 7 o'clock this morning. The sun already up. The temperature is also up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're used to seeing things kind of hovering around that freezing <laughs> mark, but not today, Andrew. <laughs> Spring is finally making a comeback. All smiles here in the studio, and it feels great out there. At least a lot better from those cold mornings we've had the past couple of ones. We're looking at temperatures starting off in the upper 30s and low 40s across much of southeast Michigan on our way to 50s and even low 60s later today. Now, I only put in the hint of an isolated shower or two, mainly by midday and during part of the afternoon, but not everyone gets one. It's not going to be a washout at all, but it is a change from the forecast that we had last night at 11 o'clock, but only a minor one. Highs today up to around 60 degrees or more. Here are those clouds over downtown Detroit now from the vantage point of our sky cam over in Windsor. Good morning to Canada as well. We've got 6, 45 degrees right now on our way to 60 or more later this afternoon. Here are a couple of showers that are trying to make it down to the ground, but not succeeding very well. Maybe in these darker areas of green, there might be a sprinkle or two closer to Morency, also just to the west of Adrian, but that is it. There's a better chance of showers and storms, though, on the way for later tonight. We'll talk more about that and your full weekend forecast in moments. You can track all this rain, including thunderstorms, with the local forecasters app. Scan this QR code that's on your screen right now, or you can go to your favorite app store. The local forecasters app, it's free. Search WDIV. All right, thanks, Andrew. With the G20 summit on the horizon, the White House is conveying to the country, Indonesia, that's hosting that Russia shouldn't be allowed to participate because of the war in Ukraine. Speaking of the war, here is the latest information. Overnight, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said Russia is doing everything it can to destroy any life in the Donbass region in the east. He also said the chances of peace talks ending are high because of Russia's, quote, playbook on murdering people. This comes as Russia's foreign minister says more than a million people have been brought from Ukraine to Russia since the invasion began. Ukraine has previously accused Russia of taking people across the border against their will and allegedly using them as hostages. And closer to home, a Detroit mom is demanding answers this morning after her seven-year-old daughter wandered away from school and got more than half a mile away. Well, thankfully, a good Samaritan intervened before anything bad could happen. The question this morning is, how did this child just walk away from her school without anyone noticing? Our Mara McDonald has this report from Detroit's east side. That good Samaritan did two things, took a pic of the child and put it up on her social media, alerting people she'd been found walking in the area of Seven and Hayes, and then going immediately to Detroit's 9th Precinct. Her mother, who doesn't want to be identified, got the call. We have your daughter here with us at the 9th Precinct. I'm like, I know you lying. You ain't got my baby. You know, she in school. I walked her in school myself, you know. They're like, no. I asked them to describe to me what she had on. They just grabbed her to a tee. I left work flying, you know, flying, you know, to get to her. Like, I was, I was scared. She gets to the ninth precinct, is told her daughter didn't just walk out of school. She walked more than half a mile along Hayes Road and ended up at Seven Mile, where a fellow mom driving by saw the little girl and picked her up. They did, someone did pick her up, stranger, did pick her up, but thank God. You know, they took her where they said it was going to take her, you know, so I was most thankful for that. But what if they hadn't? But that's the thing. What if they hadn't? In a statement, DPSCD says, quote, the district protocols for handling this incident were not followed by school-based personnel and will be addressed internally. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. And the child's mother says that she's dealing with the superintendent, Dr. Nikolai Vidi, directly. She has not decided whether she wants her little girl to come back to that same school. This is the disturbing video we first showed you Thursday night at 11. Dozens of children running for safety during recess when two loose dogs got onto the playground at Bates Academy on Detroit's west side. Two girls ended up in the hospital after being attacked. Well, thankfully, they are going to be okay. But as our Sean Lee reports, a mother in that district wants to know how school officials allowed the incident to escalate the way it did. 
it felt like an active shooter situation because you know you're you're getting calls from your your children and they're frantic. Those chaotic calls coming from the kids of Bates Academy mom Andrea Hunter Thursday, where pit bulls had just run into the school and were on the attack. And there seemed to be no plan in place to handle this life-threatening emergency. What if that was an actual active shooter situation and they were that loud? No, the teacher wasn't really calming them, doing a good job calming them down. They would have been found out. This horrific cell phone video is sending shockwaves throughout Metro Detroit. It started outside of the school. Kids screaming, running, one dog attacking a girl. No one helping. I said, why did anybody help her? She said, because honestly, we just didn't know what to do. Nobody was helping her because nobody knows how. I go to schools to teach children how to protect themselves from stray dog attacks. Freeze, don't scream, don't run. Adults must jump in. Detroit Animal Control says it has more staff, better response time. If people see stray dogs, we want them to call the city's hotline. It's 313-922-DOGS. But Detroit Dog Rescue's Christina Rinaldi insists being proactive is the key to saving a child's life next time. When kids are hurt as a mom who has school-aged children and as a dog rescuer, as someone who loves the city, we're not doing enough. We have to stop pretending like this doesn't exist and we have to work together. In Detroit, Sean Lay, Local 4. Now, Animal Control was able to capture one of the dogs. It's being tested for rabies right now. The other dog remains on the loose. Animal Control officers are still currently searching for it. Right now, a disturbing video showing an altercation between a substitute teacher and a sixth grader is going viral. Oh! Oh! Well, that video there is showing a substitute teacher dragging and hitting 11-year-old Yandra Gillespie it has been viewed on Facebook more than 21,000 times. The incident happened on Monday at Ypsilanti Middle School. Gillespie's mother admitted her son behaved badly, but feels the teacher crossed the line and acted out of rage. I have sometimes um, issues with behavior, but it doesn't give me the right to, to go out and hit him or drag him, you know, so I don't feel like she was right at all. We should not put our hands at all on students at any time. The police are investigating the incident. The teacher has not yet been charged. We've learned new information about a spate of student illnesses at a school in Genesee County. This was the scene Friday at Edgerton Elementary School in Vienna Township. Teachers called 911 just after 1 p.m. saying 15 to 18 students were experiencing nausea and dizziness. Four kindergartners are in the hospital. The sheriff says it was a foreign substance that caused their illness, not carbon monoxide. Evidence was collected and has been sent to state police for investigation. We'll, of course, keep you posted.